In the year 1999, Pokemania was in full swing. We were playing the games, watching the anime, trading the cards, and buying the toys. And when we wanted to get our Pokemon filled, there was no place better to go than Toys R Us. From December 27th, 1999 to December 31st, if you made a purchase at Toys R Us, you would receive a special card that gave you an opportunity to attend an event where you could receive Mew on your first generation Pokemon games. The way it worked is that the card you received had five different stickers on it. One for Pikachu, Squirtle, Charmander, and Mewtwo. Not sure what happened to Bulbasaur, but these four stickers were just for fun. You could put them on your Game Boy or do whatever you like with them. But the important one was Mew at the bottom. When you peeled back the Mew sticker, you would either get a message saying, caught me, or it would be an image of Jeffrey the Giraffe, meaning that you unfortunately didn't get it. Those who got the message though would be invited back to Toys R Us between January 15th and 21st in the year 2000 to have a Mew traded to their Pokemon games. As a kid who was totally into Pokemon back then, every kid was, it was the biggest thing I've ever seen. I was always at Toys R Us buying something, whether it was video game related or usually a pack of Pokemon cards or the toys, there was so many cool Pokemon toys or how about the VHSs. It really was just an all-out takeover of every form of media. I was fortunate enough to get my hands on a few of the winning cards. Two of them I ended up using to get Mew transferred to my Pokemon games, Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Yellow. And others I would even take to the Pokemon trading card game league events that they would have every weekend and trade them for some of the rarer cards out there. So I went to the event and my parents were kind enough to claim to be one of the winners so that I could have Mew transferred to two of my games. The person distributing these Mews had a special Game Boy and Game Pack, which I'm assuming the box was just full to the brim with level five Mews. Some of these Game Boys have actually resurfaced in later years. I still remember it to this day. It had a silver sticker over the cartridge so that it could not be removed, swapped out with another one. And yeah, you would just go to this guy, he'd trade the Pokemon to your device, and that would be it. When looking at the stats for this Mew, which is still on my Pokemon Yellow cartridge to this day, you can see that it originally belonged to the trainer Yoshi RB. And in case you have any doubts of the validity of this story, if we look at the next page, you can see that this Mew knows Cut and Surf. And only an eight-year-old kid could do something as dumb as teaching a Mew awful HM moves. But with that said, it's been on my mind for a long time, the fact that this Mew is so special. And yet, unfortunately, as things go, it is inevitable that someday the Pokemon game batteries will run dry. I'd already lost the Mew that was on my Pokemon Blue due to losing that save file at some point, not due to the battery failing but due to other factors, unfortunately. However, you have to wonder just how much time Pokemon Yellow has left. Thankfully, Gen 1 cartridges are much more reliable in terms of holding save data, because unlike Gen 2, where it had a clock that ran constantly and drained the battery especially quickly, Gen 1 batteries still tend to hold up today, should the cartridge not have been stored in extreme circumstances or exposed to other factors. Of course, though, we just don't know how much longer it's going to last, so it's always been in the back of my mind. Just what will happen? Will I someday lose this really important Pokemon to me? So in my online travels recently, I came across a device called the GB Operator. And what this does is it allows you to hook your Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games into your computer and either download save data from those games or upload save data into them. And this is exactly the kind of thing I thought I could use to save this Mew. So I bought one and today we're going to look at just how it works. Unboxing everything, we got the device itself as well as a USB-C cable that hooks into your computer. And as per the instructions, you plug it in first and then you insert the cartridge, which I found to be rather strange. Also, there is software that goes along with it that you download from the company's website. And then once you've got all of that hooked up, you are good to go. I decided I wanted to first try it out with a 
different cartridge because you never know. This is a device I've never used before. Just to be safe, I thought I'm not gonna put in the really important Pokemon cartridge. Let's try it with another one. And this is actually a Pokemon Red cartridge that I recently used on my channel where I hooked it up with the Nintendo 64 transfer pack to Pokemon Stadium 2 and using the Dodrio Game Boy in there, we beat Pokemon Red in five hours while playing the entire thing at three times speed. So if you want to check out that stream, it was pretty funny. Uh, I will link to that and you can have a look. But regardless though, having that hooked up now to my PC, it actually is a good thing that I tried out everything with Pokemon Red initially. It didn't seem to be having a very good connection. At the front page of the software, you can see that it kind of dips in and out of Pokemon Red being available on the screen, like the connection was not very good. And attempting to play the game through the software, which is another functionality that it has, it said that the game's data was destroyed, and that was obviously something that was not the case when we had just played this cartridge several months prior. Thankfully though, when I closed down the software, it asked if I wanted to save these changes to the cartridge, and clicking no, I found that putting this Pokemon Red back into my Game Boy, the previous save file was still there. Had me a little bit worried though about using this with my Pokemon Yellow, but I figured that since no harm was done, I tried the Pokemon Red cartridge again, and this time it worked just fine with the software. One change that I made was I plugged in the cartridge before plugging in the Game Boy operator, so maybe that made a difference. Because I checked all of the connections and everything seemed to be fine. Also, you might want to avoid playing your games with this software, it still is in beta version, plus there are better ways to do that sort of thing, should you wish to. But regardless, we could now try out some of the features. So the first thing I did was extract the save file from the Pokemon Red cartridge, and that worked perfectly. And then after that, I found a another Pokemon Red save file online that was actually complete with 151 Pokemon and tried inserting that into the Pokemon Red cartridge, and it worked perfectly as well. So I now have a Pokemon Red cartridge with everything completed, even though I didn't do a single thing. But from what I saw, based on these experiments, this is a very cool device. And there's so much potential here. It's amazing that there are so many Game Boy games that we have sunk so much time into, whether it's the Pokemon games or the Mega Man Battle Network games. It's funny to think that these portable games tend to be the ones that we play the most and have the most important save data to us. Which is why even beyond just saving this Toys R Us Mew, I thought this would be a really neat device to have. But seeing now that Pokemon Red worked fine, I said, all right, let's give it a shot with Pokemon Yellow. So I put that in there and it extracted the save data just fine. So with that, the Mew that I won from Toys R Us in the year 1999 and received in January of 2000 is now safe forever on my computer's hard drive until that inevitably fails and then it's a rescue mission once again. But I just thought this would be a really fun thing to do because it's been on my mind for years just what will happen to this extremely important Pokemon that I'm sure there are not many more of out there. Unfortunately, already losing the one that I got to my Pokemon Blue, but uh, to have this one backed up digitally makes me really happy. I have some other ideas as well for things that might be cool to use this device with, so if you want to see more, be sure to stay tuned. Also, this video is not in any way sponsored by GB Operator. Again, it was just something I came across while browsing the internet and thought it would be cool to make a video of this process. But with that, I hope you found that interesting, hearing the story of one of the very first Pokemon-related events, and just seeing a process that you can also use as well to save your precious Game Boy and Game Boy Advance save data. But with that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and hope to see you next time for something different. So thanks, and take care, everyone.